Hey, this is Onesto, and today we're gonna to talk about Arturia's Fragments for Beginners. This video is gonna be really introductory, so I'm not gonna talk about every single knob. I'll start with Fragments on default, and then we're gonna build upon the effect as we learn more about it. So hopefully by the end of this video, we end up with a pretty cool sound. So I wanna start off with an oversimplified definition of granular synthesis. Wikipedia describes it really well. Granular synthesis is a sound synthesis method that's based on the same principle as sampling. However, the samples, they're split into small pieces, and these little small pieces are called grains. And these grains can be layered on top of each other. They can play at different speeds, different phases, and volume and frequency, among other parameters. At low speeds of playback, you get a really unique cloud-like uh, soundscape. And at high speeds, you'll get something that sounds like, um, like notes with these really unique timbres to it. So let's see how Fragment does granular synthesis, starting with the main grain control panel that they call the buffer. This waveform visualizer is really helpful to know what is going on within Fragments. It looks like there's a lot going on already, but what's happening is that Fragments is constantly recording what's being played through the plugin. These sound grains are then sourced from this little recording here. So you probably notice a bunch of yellow lines and this white line going across. The white line, that's the playhead. Whatever is behind it, that's what's been freshly recorded inside of Fragments. The yellow lines are the grain capture markers. They represent the activity inside of the granular engine here. Pretty much whenever the, one of these yellow lines overlap with the waveform, it plays whatever was played at the moment. Let me uh, show you what I mean. As we go through other green controls, you'll see that the yellow lines will behave differently, resulting in entirely different sounds. Now, I hope you're wrapping your mind around this. This is the most fundamental process happening inside of this effect. So if you understand this, then it's gonna help you so much with the rest of this plugin. So now let's talk about some of these buffer controls. I'll get back to the intensity and effects macros later, um, but first let's talk about the buffer length. This is where you can determine how long or how short the buffer recording is. The freeze, uh, this freezes a playhead and the waveform inside of the buffer. And clear will clear the waveform entirely so you can start all over again. And this feedback knob is really great. It takes the output from the West signal and it loops it right back into the buffer section. But be careful because when feedback is set to high amounts, uh, you can get really high pitched and I don't know, hurt your ears and stuff. And this grain volume knob is pretty simple. It's the output level of the granular engine. Grain mix is pretty simple too. It's the blend between the dry and granulized signal. No, oh yeah, if you forget what something does, just hover over a knob and you'll get a brief description in the tool tips here um, down below. And before I move on, if you wanna try Fragments out for free, just click my affiliate link down below and you can give it a shot. Okay, let's move on to the grain capture panel. Um, this section is all about determining the position of the grains on the incoming audio signal. And there's three different modes. You have uh, speed, offset, and manual scan. So when this is set to speed, the speed knob uh, determines the ratio of the grain capture marker. So when it's set to zero, it doesn't go anywhere. When you set it to one X, it goes the same speed as a playhead. When it's set to two X, it doubles the speed and at negative values, it goes in reverse. When set to offset mode, this knob will determine how much the yellow lines will lag behind the playhead. At manual scan mode, you'll see that the yellow line stays still. And whenever you move this knob is how you move the grain capture marker. But of course, moving this knob yourself all the time is gonna be a little impractical. There's a couple of ways that you can move it, which is with uh, LFO modulation that we'll talk about later, or by introducing randomization. You'll notice that some of these knobs have like this little dot over it. Um, when you hover over them, you can click and drag and this yellow ring will start to appear around it. This yellow ring is randomization and granular synthesis sort of thrives on randomness so you'll wanna get comfortable with it. You can make the randomization unipolar or bipolar just by clicking these little arrows here. And there's also these grain quantization controls but I find that they're more of like an advanced kind of control. So I'm just gonna skip them. Um, if you wanna learn about these controls, any control that I skip, um, Arturia has a full walkthrough that I linked below as well that you can check out. But whenever I use fragments, I like to have it on grain capture speed. I just feel like it's a, uh, a mode that works really well for me. So, and I'm gonna set the speed to around here and let's hear how that sounds. Cool, I think we're, I think we're starting to get somewhere. Okay, now it's time to talk about the grain release section. This is where a lot of the magic happens inside of Fragments. 
There's three modes here. You have classic, texture, and rhythmic. So let's start with classic mode. In classic mode, the density knob controls the rate that new grains are going to be generated. At low values, the grains generate slowly. So as I increase the knob, more grains are going to be generated and just populate this section here. The size knob determines the length of each grain. So at low values, the grains will be little blips because the grain's length is low. At higher values, the grains start to smear together because the grains are longer. And this pitch knob, I really like the pitch knob. Um, it sets the pitch of the grains themselves. I like to set the pitch to octaves or fifths. I think I feel like you get like some really good results out of that. And remember, all these knobs can be randomized by adding in the yellow ring here. Especially on these first two knobs, I like to add some randomization. Now let's talk about texture mode. The size and pitch knobs, they're the same, but density, this knob has been swapped out for layers. The layered knob sets a number of grain layers that are going to be played at the same time. It ranges from 1 all the way to 32, which is a ridiculous amount, but here's how it sounds. And then in rhythmic mode, we have the same size and pitch knobs, but now we have a sequence rate knob. The sequence rate determines the rate that the grains will go through the step sequencer here. And each step of the sequence, you can determine how many grains will be played on the step, whether it's 0, 1, 2, or 4. The two modes I'd like to play around with a lot are classic or texture. So let me just choose one and then set it up to where I like. Yeah, that sounds super crazy right now, but it'll sound a whole lot better once I add in some effects like reverb. Uh, maybe not delay because there's quite a lot going on, but uh, hopefully this will work better. At the bottom of this section, you have some knobs that can add a little bit more character and movement to your uh, signal here. There's a width knob, there's a grain direction knob, which determines if the grain is played uh, forward, in reverse, or a little bit of both. You have this really cool grain crush knob that adds some big pressure. And then grain shape here that determines the volume envelope and this random fine knob that gives some detuning to the grains. I like to see these controls as adding character and spice to your sound, so give it a shot. Okay, that was a whole lot. Thanks for sticking with me. That is the bulk of the granular engine inside of Fragments. All the other sections in here, they're going to be pretty much stuff that you're familiar with, like pan, effects, uh, modulation, and macros. But before I get there, if you're finding this tutorial really useful, please consider supporting the channel by liking this video. The pan and effects panel are kind of like the bells and whistles inside of Fragments. The pan panel, this is pretty cool. You get this little stereo imaging visualizer with this yellow dot. Um, and besides the basic controls you expect for panning, like a left and right, we have this distance knob that also works with some of these pan modes here. With this distance knob, not only will the grains be going left and right, but they'll also go from uh, close to far, which I think is a really cool feature. And after the pan, you have these two effect slots where you have access to nine different effects. Um, these are really solid. There's typical effects you expect, so I'm not going to uh, talk too much about it. Um, and to finish off this video, I'm going to breeze through this bottom section where all the macro and modulation happens. I think this is a little confusing, but macro 1 and 2 correlate to the effects and uh, intensity knob up here. You can also double click um, below these macros to name them whatever you want. So I'm going to name them macro 1 and 2 to make it a little bit less confusing right now. And then to assign some modulation, it's really, really easy. Just click assign and then hover over a knob, drag it up or down to assign that modulation to it. And then when you move on to the function modulation, this is pretty much the LFO shape where you can make any shape you want. Um, and you can assign this LFO to most knobs as well. And to assign modulation, it's just like the macros. Just click assign and then drag up or down. And then you have this envelope follower, which can follow the audio, or you can side chain it if you like. And lastly, we have the sequencer here where you can draw in a step sequence and modulation will happen according to those steps. Cool, let's see where the sound ended up. So here we have before. And here we have after. Let's add some more reverb real quick. Ooh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I like that. 
And this is how to use Fragments by Arturia for beginners. If you're enjoying what you're learning, please like and subscribe. It'll help other music makers find this channel. Thanks so much for watching. Later.